Welcome to your favorite show, Identities Unklobo, where we talk about social, economic, and political issues. Today, we are delving into a social issue that has made the whole country a buzz. And um, in the studio to discuss this issue of the marriage bill, I have Nompilo. Hi, Nompilo. Hi, Neri. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I have Mr. Devson Kanokanga. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. They are both lawyers, and um, Mr. Devson is also a bishop, so it's important for us to be clear that we've got the church in the house as well as the women's movement uh, in the community in the house so that the citizens, um, we hear what the citizens are saying, but I also know that Nompilo is representing the women's movement as well, um, so that, that is something to, that's something very good to look at. The newly gazetted uh, marriage bill of 2019 repeals and replaces current Customary Marriages Act and the Marriages Act 5.11. There will be one act of law in line with the Constitution. There's been a lot of buzz around the marriage bill. What is the first known pillar? What's, what are the highlights? So the key highlights really, firstly, is the issue of child marriages. It prohibits child marriages because it's in line with the Constitution and also the issue of equality of marriages in Zimbabwe because you'd find that we have the customary law marriage, the registered customary law union, and the civil marriage, and these laws have been in existence separately. So now the act is coming together to make sure that we have equality of those marriages, um, and also the recognition of civil partnerships, which I think is the most problematic thing <laughs> that has caused the noise. <laughs> so I, I just want you to kind of touch on each of them, because I think... I think generally this bill has been demonized, if I can say it that way. And I would say that, fortunately or unfortunately, a lot of demonization is coming from the church. Uh, but I think it's also been sensationalized from the community perspective. And I remember there's been cartoons saying, oh, this can do this, this can do. I mean, a whole, you know, and a lot of uh, audios that are circulating. So um, I want you to touch on issues of child marriages because there's an audio that's been circulating that says this bill authorizes child marriages. Is that true? No, that is very misleading, Yari. Actually, the bill prohibits child marriages in line with the Constitution because Section 78 of the Constitution clearly states that um, a person below the age of 18 cannot found a family that is not cannot enter into a marriage. Mm -hmm. So the bill is coming and making sure that it repeals the laws that we have, particular section 22, which initially recognized um, child marriages and marriage at 16. So now the bill is coming and prohibiting a marriage between a person who is below the age of 18. And it even makes it an offense for relatives or uh, parents to pledge a child into marriage when they're not yet above 18 or to even consent to a marriage of a child above 18. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. And then also in terms of our marriages, um, it, the, bill, the act, the bill is coming together and providing that um, all our marriages are going to be recognized equally. Mm. And that means also the customary marriages are not going to be registered mm. um, and solemnized, which I think the bishop can speak to. Well, first of all, Mpilo, thank you for explaining that this bill is prohibiting. It's not allowed to marry a child below the age of 18. That is settled and it's according to the law, it's according to the constitution. So first of all, the new bill, maybe I'll come to you for this and say, the new bill. First of all, the title of the bill is marriages bill. Mm. You go to clause 40, you find that a civil partnership is not a marriage. So, members of the public are asking a relevant question mm. to say if the bill is about marriages and civil partnerships are not marriages, what are civil partnerships doing in a marriages bill? That's one aspect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other one is this, that uh, if you look at uh, the preamble to our constitution, mm. it says we as a nation acknowledge the supremacy of Almighty God. The question that people are asking, especially those of a Christian persuasion, mm. is that where is God in these civil partnerships if we acknowledge him as Almighty? Mm. The third one is this, that if you are saying uh, people who are married 
can also enter into civil partnerships. Are you then not, in a sense, legalizing and institutionalizing both fornication and adultery? So Before these are this, the issues arising. Thank you very much. And um, I, I'm bothered by why the Christian community is suddenly not happy about this bill. Are they not happy about this bill because it's, it's highlighting what society has always been doing. Are we concerned about the almost the administrative part of the issue when we're talking about God? Or we are bothered about the happening because this occurrence has been happening. The fact that the government is now putting in place uh, the fact that there's women that are married here or the women that are staying with certain people for a very long time and are not acknowledged. Is the church only waking up because of a paper that's called a marriage uh, certificate or the church is concerned about the fornication that should never happen in the first place? Because we've got extramarital affairs that have been happening from time immemorial um, we've got children that are side because of this. The, Where is the, the church coming in and waking up about God? No, the, the church has never been asleep. <laughs> 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 the church has always been alert and speaking and preaching against fornication and adultery and making it clear that sin is sin. The concern is now heightened by the desire by a whole government to legalize and the fornication. That's right. Because the church preaches the word of God, the church fears God. And as a nation, we have said we fear but God. But the church is scrupulous and unscrupulous for extramarital affairs, sexualization of women in the church. When we come back, we want to find out from the bishop to say, has the church really not been sleeping? Or the church, is it not the one that's actually sexualizing the women in the church? Um, we are going to take a break. When we come back, we continue with this crucial conversation. Stay with us. <laughs>